brothers could be the father. Two brothers with the same name could be the biological father. This is a lot. It is. It really is. When he came to me and he told me that he was my dad, um, I went to family members and I asked them, did you know that there was a possibility? And even though she was not at the time telling me there was a possibility Steve was my dad, they've all told me they believe Steve is my dad. But Michael Shockley, you still believe you are Desiree's biological father. You believe that? Yes, Your Honor. She's always been my little girl, so she'll never be, not be my little girl, but... Like, I have all girls, and he's got all boys. All boys and one girl. Let's <laughs> see. So you submitted a chart. <laughs> <laughs> you like my chart? <laughs> so, Mike, you say you have all girls. Yes, ma'am. Three girls, and Desiree's right there in the middle. Yep. Steve, you have all boys. Yes, Your Honor. Five boys. And one daughter. <laughs> He's serious about that one daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and you believe this shows basically that I guess Mr. Shockley makes boys, <laughs> not girls. Even in my last boy, know. when we had the, patern- uh, the uh, ultrasound done, it showed two times, we had three of them done. It showed two times that my last boy was a girl. He come out a boy. <laughs> so that doesn't, when, when he's talking about that, that, that doesn't mean nothing. Yeah. I don't think what you just said <laughs> mean nothing either. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> but you know what? You're reaching, and if you're reaching because you so desperately want to be her father, Right or wrong or indifferent, I will never, ever condemn a man in this courtroom who desperately wants to be a father. So... Yeah, Mr. Shockley, I don't think that added up to any (laughs) relevant testimony, but you went for it. (laughs) Mr. Michael Shockley, you brought a witness. I'd like to hear from her. Ma'am, please stand. Yes, ma'am. Step over to the podium. State your name for the court. Crystal Dennis. Ms. Dennis, what relationship are you to the defendant? I'm his daughter. All right. And you are here, I'm sure, because you have now learned about this entire paternity question. Have you ever had any doubt in your mind? No, ma'am. Your whole life growing up, you knew Desiree to be your sister. Yes, our whole life, we were known as our dads, as Mike's. Uh, we, We always... We fought as kids over who was more of a daddy's girl, you know? She'd be like, oh, you're mama's girl. No, I'm daddy's girl. And, you know, we always, we went back and forth. We grew up with him. We, you know, he's he's on our birth certificates. He's got our names tattooed on his neck, one on each side. (laughs) We've always been daddy's girls. And you have the same mother as well. So in your mind, you and your sister share the same mother and the same father. In my mind, I always knew we were the only ones that were fully linked up because my other siblings were my uncles, who were also my cousins. Who are also (laughs) your cousins. That would be correct. (laughs) (laughs) So to me, with this going on, I've always questioned why why did he never come forward before? Why why wait all this time? To me, it doesn't make sense. Why would you wait 20 years to come up and say something, why? That hurt us more than anything. If, if you were, why did you wait? But why are you why? blaming me? I mean, I, like I said a while ago, I, I would have told, told her years ago if, I if they hadn't kept her from me. She was my little girl. She's my daughter. So Desiree, when you hear this and you hear your sister talk about how much it meant to her that you shared the same mother and the same father, and now you have to live with the fact that you don't know that if that's true. We've never been really close, but that was some, that was a way that we were close. That way it was, it was the connection that we had. You know, we could always say that our Bubba, yeah, he's our Bubba, but we're closer. We have that bigger connection because we do have the same mother and the same father. So I feel like in a way it kind of broke a connection that we had. And that hurts you. It hurts really bad. Because, truthfully, this news is... It's breaking so many connections you feel like you had. Correct. Uh, It it broke... I mean, it... It 
it's kind of broke the, the connection of the daddy's girl that I had. It broke that connection with him. It broke the connection with my sister because I don't know if that is my full-blooded sister anymore. Um, it don't it, matter, it, I it, love you. It makes me question so many, it makes me question, I love you too. It, question, it makes me question so much because I, now I, instead of being in the known, I'm in limbo. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. It's heartbreaking. It, it's, it's heartbreaking to the point that I feel like I've been lied to my entire life. I've been, like, my entire first 20 years as far as who my dad is has been one big lie. So now, in this moment, who do you call dad? Steve. Oh, you do? Yes, ma'am. So my next question was, who do you believe is your biological father? In my heart, I feel like Steve is. When he told me that, after that, we lost contact a lot. So Who did? Me and Mike did. We lost contact. Um, Wait, you were a daddy's girl. <laughs> Just because you asked the question and then he gave the answer, then you lost no, it contact? Was, it was contact as we were never... We never stayed in contact with each other. Like, he kind of backed out a little bit. Like, he kind of backed away a little bit. But he's been, ever since he's told me 11 years ago that, Des, you may be my daughter, he has been there 100% as my dad. Not as an uncle, but as my dad. So, I have... The, I have begun to develop that daughter relationship with him. And I don't want to be building a daughter relationship with him if he's not my dad. Right. This is heartbreaking. And I just want you to know you are in no way wrong. <laughs> what other choice would you have? Right. When you don't know. And so once it was uncovered, Mr. Shockley, Michael Shockley, where'd you go? I just figured that she wanted me to back up a little bit and that way they could get closer to, you know, if he was her dad. In the way, and it could have been, and I, I can understand and I where he, where where he would come with that. <laughs> because I did, I did tell him that I wanted to develop, some, because I had no type of relationship with Steve. I didn't have an uncle-daughter or an uncle-niece relationship, nor did I have a daughter, you know, daughter-father relationship. And I did tell Mike that I wanted to develop some type of relationship with him. But he just backed up a little bit more than I would have liked for him to. <sighs> this is deep. Yeah. Yeah. This is really deep. So many pieces to this puzzle, and yet still unsolved. Because this is just, this is years, this is decades, this is three decades mm -hmm. of a paternity secret. I want to get Dr. Baird on the line. He's the chief science officer at uh, DNA Diagnostics, the laboratory which handles all of our testing. And I just want to make sure we are clear on every part of this, because when we get down to the truth, I want everybody to understand how and why it is the absolute truth. So let me see if I can get Dr. Baird on the line. Dr. Baird, are you there? I'm here, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Thank you so much for taking some time out for us today. Dr. Baird, we have a case in the courtroom today. We've never seen anything like it at paternity court. Dr. Baird, we have two biological brothers with very similar names. I want to make sure that we understand how does DNA diagnostics differentiate between the two men at the facility? Two men with almost the same names, but also the same mother and the same father. Well, that is certainly a difficult thing to do genetically to sort out which of the two is the true biological father. However, what we do at DNA Diagnostic Center is that we do additional testing in order to exclude one of the two individuals. And in this particular case, that's exactly what we did. We uh, tested almost twice the number of samples of DNA that we normally test in order to exclude absolutely one of the two individuals. Can you speak to the chain of custody of the samples? I just want to make sure we understand how they move through this process to make sure there is no confusion because we have a young woman here who has waited 31 years for this answer. 
The chain of custody is very important in cases like this. So when the samples are collected, there are uh, photographs taken of the individuals um, having their sample collected. There are signatures that are obtained at that time. So you know they are the person. That's correct. And again, we follow the standards that are put forth by the American Association of Blood Banks to ensure that we have a good chain of custody. Thank you so much, Dr. Baird, for just clarifying all of that for us. I just want to make sure our family understands the care which you take to ensure that they get a proper and true result. It's my pleasure, George. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye. So I hope you understand. Yes, ma'am. That great care is taken to ensure that the proper result is given to you. Yes, Your Honor. And I realize how high the stakes are. Regardless of whichever it turns out is my dad, I still want a relationship with both of them. Just one is my uncle, one is my dad. And you deserve that. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Shockley, Steve Shockley, if the results show you are not her biological father, will you regret ever mentioning this to her? No, Your Honor. Because even if it does show it, I know what step I have to take next. I have to make, take this step next to her. I'm going to be her uncle. Yeah. I mean, and I'm going to be the best uncle she's ever had. And how about you, Mr. Shockley, Michael Shockley? How are you feeling in this? Do you, do you hope that the tests show that this little girl you raised, you've always believed was your biological child, is in fact your biological daughter? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. I hope she's my daughter. But she'd be my little girl always. We, we never, you know, that, we'll always have that. But I just hope whatever the decision is makes her happy. Ms. Grove? Yes? What are you feeling in this moment? <laughs> I can't explain it. I wouldn't like to be her dad because they've always had such a strong bond. You know, they, her growing up, you know, I, I can't change the past. I'm sorry for a lot of things, but in my heart, I feel like Mike is her dad. And I just want Desiree to get the answers that she needs. I'm glad, because I want you to get the answers you need. And I have those answers for you. Jerome, may I have the envelope, please? (laughs) These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Shockley versus Shockley, pertaining to whether Steve Shockley or Stephen Michael Shockley is the father of 31-year-old Desiree Boone. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Steve Shockley. Yes! Oh, yes. Baby. I knew I'd say the only way. I'd say the only way to see me. I knew. You want to go by and stand with your desk? Sure. (sighs) How do you feel, Miss Grove? I'm disappointed because, like I said, and I feel bad for Mike. You know, I know this is hurting him. And I'm sorry, Mike. I honestly believe that she was your daughter. So I owe both of y'all, I owe all of y'all apology. Desiree, you also. But in my heart, I hope you know. I honestly believe Mike was your dad. I love you, brother. 
the end of the day, just because we don't share the same dad doesn't mean we don't, we're not sisters. I'll, it's, I'll never, I don't look at her as my cousin. She's not my cousin, she's my sissy. And my big sis. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. This has been a saga. What I love so much is I often say in this life, you gotta find the magic in the mess, right? Yes, ma'am. And I'm proud of you for just having the courage to step out on faith and do what you felt. What's so messy about this is also what's so magical because you all are all still family. <laughs> you really are. So we have counseling for you. I wish you all the very best. Court is adjourned.